The new version of the Make Noise Maths is a direct descendant of the original. It has a number of streamlines and improvements, and adds a few new features as well. This video is an overview of the changes and improvements. Check the links in the video description and on the Make Noise website for information about maths in general. The output attenuverters for the four channels are now arranged vertically for a more intuitive mixing surface. The LEDs on channels 1 and 4 are now bipolar and more sensitive to subtle signal changes. There are also new LEDs indicating the states of end of rise and end of cycle gates, as well as negative and positive LED indicators for the sum output. The range of the curve panel controls has been increased on the logarithmic end for more extreme logarithmic curves and an improved facility for East Coast style portamento. The exponential curve retains its original range for the popular whip shape. The offset generator on channel 2 now has a range of plus or minus 10 volts. A plus or minus 5 volt offset is still available on channel 3. Previously you could achieve a 10 volt offset by summing the two middle channels. Now only one channel is necessary, freeing up channel 3 for other purposes. Because the make noise system now contains a multiple, the output multiples on channels 1 and 4 have been replaced with unity outputs. This allows for two versions of these channels outputs to be used in the same patch instead of tying both to the level of the output attenuverters. The individual outs are still buffered so they could be multiplied externally if you like. The inverted output is a simple inversion of the sum out. This could of course be achieved before with the use of a middle channel, but that extra patching is no longer necessary. The cycle inputs on channels 1 and 4 cause their respective channel to cycle on gate high. It will stop cycling on gate low unless the cycle button is activated. This new version is functionally very similar to the original. The changes have been made with an eye to increasing the signal generation and processing capabilities while decreasing the number of channels necessary for any given use. The LEDs at the channel 1 and 4 unity outputs are bipolar and sensitive to small changes in voltage. Here we have a bipolar step signal at the channel 1 input. You can see the LED changing brightness as the amplitude changes and changing color as the polarity switches. The sum output utilizes two LEDs, one for each polarity. If we invert channel 1 at the sum output, you can see its LEDs now swapping places while the channel 1 unity outputs LED rem remains the same. Cycling channels 1 and 4 at opposite polarities gives us complex functions at the sum out and we can visualize them with the LEDs. Here's a demonstration of the logarithmic response curve, used for a traditional portamento effect. Channel 4 is fed by a sequence from René, with the portamento set by the rise and fall times. The unity output goes to our 1 volt per octave response. You can hear that the majority of the rising portamento happens at the very beginning of the step. take the channel 4 output and feed it to the both input to make the lag time shorter or longer as the pitch goes up. Because the unity output is not affected by channel 4's panel control, the main pitches in the sequence are not affected and we can change the amount and direction of this modulation independently of the pitch CV but keep it related. On the original mass, this would require running the signal through channel 2 or 3 before patching it to the both input. This feature can also be used to make complex envelope shapes with different curves for rise and fall, as we'll show in a future video. The offset generation on channel 2 now has a range of plus or minus 10 volts, twice the original range. With this greater range, we can now offset a full amplitude function entirely across zero without inverting it. Here's channel 1 cycling at full positive amplitude. We 
we can of course invert the signal with the channel 1 panel control, but with a negative 10 volt offset from channel 2, we can move it down into the negative range of the sum output as displayed on the LEDs. We can also move it up from full negative amplitude. We can also use this large offset range to do some interesting things to audio signals. For example, if we let channel 1 cycle at audio rate in the positive range, we can use the sum out with the channel 2 offset to move the signal up so it runs out of headroom and starts to clip. By applying more offset, we can make the signal disappear entirely. Now a negative envelope, either from channel 4 or an external signal, will bring it back, allowing us to use maths as a crude audio VCA. The cycle inputs allow the use of gate signals to engage and disengage cycling in channel 1 and 4. Since both channels produce gates, we can use a slow cycle on one to engage a fast cycle on the other, utilizing the OR output for complex envelope shapes. End of rise will give a different effect from end of cycle. Here's a quick demonstration of how the unity outputs, sum, and cycling input can give us several different flavors of modulation from a sequence in a couple maths channels. Rene, via the channel 4 unity output, controls one VCO's pitch while the sum out controls the other. Channel 1's cycle input gets gated periodically.